if you start to really sit and analyze it and try to do an impression, if you did a perfect impression, it would be too much. Thanks so much, Christopher Jones. I'm Dan from Cineworld. Is she here yet? Not yet, ma'am, no. Then she's late. Yes, she is late. This feels like quite an exciting role for you, quite a sort of different choice. What was it that made you want to get involved with the project? Uh, I think Pablo Lorraine is an incredible filmmaker. I, I love his movies. He called me with, um, like, silly confidence that I should play Princess Diana, which as a first notion was, like, ridiculous to me. <laughs> but it was, like, very contagious. I was like, um, I, I mean, I really like her. It's really hard not to like her. I didn't know very much about her before we made this movie, but I did know that I was drawn to this person and that it was a sort of... Um, kind of just a good time to fantasize about what it felt like in an interior way. And so um, as scary as it was and and as irresponsible as it was to say like, yes, I think I can definitely do this in your film. I had to give it a shot. I totally could have fallen on my face, but it was worth, it was worth trying. Your Royal Highness. Mommy. <laughs> Family are all gathered in the drawing room. They are waiting. about you. So stand very still and smile a lot. They know everything. They don't. How do you go about researching that role and what did you bring from what you did know and then what you learned while researching the role to the, to the film? Specifically, I knew, I mean, I knew the very sort of brass tacks, you know, she was not happy in the royal family. It was a big deal that she left. Everyone was very mad at her. And then she tragically died in a car accident. Um, in consuming all of the material, there are so many contradicting perspectives and everybody's weighed in on what they think happened and how they think she felt or their impression of being around her. Um, they're all very different. And so you can kind of read everything, kind of take it all with a grain of salt and try and absorb an energy. And the script itself was written so beautifully and concisely, and he obviously was very well researched. Stephen Knight spoke to people that did spend time with her, uh, people that he can't even um, divulge, like people that he spoke to that he won't say who they are. Um, so even though the movie doesn't give you even a remote play-by-play, or it doesn't profess to know anything and it doesn't sort of put anyone on the side of right and or or wrong ever. Uh, the whole history of her, the whole sort of like uh, global impression of her, we just sort of tried to distill it and step inside and fantasize and dream about it and make a sort of long tone poem about her escape. Do you want to be the queen? I'll be your mom. Yeah, in this house. There is no future. Past and the present are the same thing. Diana, they can't change. You have to change. You have to be able to do things you hate. That you hate? There has to be two of you. There's the real one and the one they take pictures of. The fashion in this film is exquisite. It's mm. so great. Mm. Um, I maybe want feathered hair to come back very much. Yeah. Do you have any favorite, you know, looks or anything like that from the film that you think aided the character or just you think are great anyway? Yeah. I mean, this probably won't come as a surprise, but whenever she just put on a pair of jeans, it felt really good. <laughs> she's so cute. I mean, in, in life, she's just so cute when she's casual. She has this amazing, disarming, like, she feels like somebody that you could be like, hey, do you want to race down the hall? And mm. she would, even if she was wearing a dress or if she was like, she just felt so lived in, even when she was beautiful, like even when she was wearing clothes that you felt like she didn't like and it was a bit more awkward, she sticks out of them. Like she just, unfortunately, I think she she's a lot taller than me, but energetically she's like, you know, 10 feet tall, mm. um, no matter what she's wearing. But the clothes at times felt like armor, sometimes like a straitjacket, sometimes like 
um, really empowering. Uh, I love the dress on the poster. That Chanel dress is like one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in person. I, I love that thing. For the good of the country. It's the country. You know, I really like things that are simple, ordinary, or things that are real. Not with them. Do you have any reference points that you looked at specifically and you were like, that's how she would deliver this line to one person, to another? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely picked out certain things, um, like affectations, idiosyncrasies. She is somebody who never really stops moving. She is a frenetic person. It's actually like, if you start to really sit and analyze it and try to do an impression, if you did a perfect impression, it would be too much. It's almost like she's a character of herself at times in interviews. She's like this undulating, swanning, like blinking, talking. She talks so fast. Um, she's always reaching out as well. I feel like the, the trippiest thing about watching the interviews is that she's never, other than later in life when she decided to do, when she planned certain interviews, uh, she's always saying one thing, but meaning another and reaching out from behind a kind of curtain um, of, of, of a, of a place where she's not allowed to really express herself. Mm -hmm. And so she's doing it in other ways. She's doing it with looks and with energy and emotion and kind of cryptic ways of, of, of saying things mm -hmm. um, and kind of decode emotion, like emotionally decoding this puzzle was really fun to do. And, and you can become really obsessed as well. There's like a lot of material to look at. Fight them. You are your own weapon.